Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home with myself, Raghat Bakar, and our expert life coach and NLP practitioner, Fahima Mohammed, who today will be talking about the crucial topic of friendship, how to choose friends and how to be a good friend. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima, and thank, thank you for coming salam. today. Thank you very much for having me. Can you tell us from your perspective, a uh, life coach, the importance of friendship? Well, um, it's not just about life coaching. I think in general, we know as humans, we exist, mm. you know, wanting and having the natural need to connect with each other as humans. And obviously the most, you know, uh, easiest way to do that is through our friendships. And we build a bond when we're in our families with our siblings. Mm. And then as we get older and we go through life in school and outside, you know, with work and colleagues and things like that, then friendships is the most easiest way to sort of connect with people and it's really necessary and it's really important and actually it doesn't matter what kind of personality you have there's always a time in, your, in the stage in your life where you want people around you and you need people around you and it's actually healthy to have someone around you so you know knowing the importance of friendships is vital but then we have to know what kind of person are we being as a friend is one thing and the other thing is how do we choose our friends because psychologists and researchers today, even in the religion of Islam, has said a lot of the same things, which is that, you know, you become who you hang around with. There is an influence and there's an impact, especially over time. And there's a lot of issues in between that, because on one end, you can say, like especially now in the communities, you know, uh, parents encourage their children to sort of be with particular communities that are their own you know, same background, same culture, same religion. And on one hand, that could be really good, you know, to have that influence. Mm. But at the same time, like living in the West and having the diversity and wanting to integrate and to be open. Um, also, you know, having an influence because you are a particular way, so you want to have the influence. And depending on the character that you are, you either be influenced or you can influence. Mm -hmm. So the upbringing and your strong character and your, you know, the building of yourself mm. is really vital because that will make a difference with your choices and your decisions with regards to the environment and the people that you're around. And um, we do say that you know, it's nice to be around the same sort of communities, which is your own, but at the same time, you know, how, to what extent you know, do you do that? And I think there's a difference with different stages in, you know, and different ages. And I think when we are also keeping ourselves in boxes and labels, it can be quite um, negative and it can be quite sort of, um, you know, keep you back in certain you know, situations and scenarios. So there's two sides to look at it. I know that a lot of people are scared, parents that have come from abroad years ago and they want to keep the tradition and they want to keep you know, families and communities and languages together mm. and thinking that, you know, if our children are mainly playing with people that are not from their own, you know, background, then they're going to be influenced in the bad way. But actually, um, the other side of that is, is how you bring them up and how they see life, because mm. you can never really keep anyone caged. And if you do, they will go wild. So to yeah. what extent do you actually, you know, open them up? To what extent do you actually show them the outside world and have those sort of friends? And as you get older, the influence can be a lot more uh, damaging if they go well, a certain way. As you said, it's, you said it was quite important to also mix with people outside of your yes. culture. But um, you can kind of differentiate between a friendship with someone within your culture and someone who comes in and out of your house, as we say in Arabic, yes. and um, a colleague, so someone who you mix with at school or at work, um, just so that you can, you know, diverse your uh, outlook, your yeah. outlook, mm -hmm. and just have a, a more diverse uh, circle of friends. Yes. So you can have like two two Absolutely. types of friends, can't you? Absolutely. Mm. Thing is, though, we're not taught to be in that way, though, because the amount of time they actually spend outside the house, even if you have people coming in and out of your house is outside the house in school and that's where the diversity does you know come in and even at work so as much as you want to be with your own it's very difficult at the same time and yeah. the influence is there so you need to be really strong within yourself to know who you are and to build that character and to not be ashamed that you don't need to conform mm. and at the same time you know um, you actually you know um, teaching others about yourself 
by being well. your way. Exactly. Because if you're just hanging around with your own yeah. people, for example, at school, because I remember when we were at school, yes. um, you know, you had, we had our friends that were our school friends. But they were just school friends. So mm -hmm. even even when we left school, we didn't really stay in touch with them. They weren't from yeah. a different culture. Um, and then we had our real friends. They were, they were also at school, but then we'd, we'd meet them outside of school as well. Until now, we're, sp we're still in touch. So I think, yeah, you're, what you're saying is um, spot on. Like, as in, like, you have to have that um, diverse, diversity yeah, of friends. Yeah, you've got to have balance. And balance. Yeah, balance. And the thing is, I mean... It's, it's okay to also label people outside your background being a bad influence, but actually, you know, you might find scenarios where there are people that are, might not be from your religion, but they actually have much better morals. Mm, mm. And the problem may lie even with your children being in their own culture and background and being influenced in a bad way. So those sort of friends are also to be warned about. And then, you know, you think, well, they're also Muslim, but they're doing wrong. So it's okay for me to do wrong. So, you know, mm. you know all these things need to be considered. Exactly. So you need to sort of like, you know, um, as parents, bring up your children in a certain way. And even as adults, you know, take that responsibility for yourself to sort of check yourself as to, you know, who is around me and mm -hmm. what is their, you know, influence on me? And am I, am I following them or are they leading me? And, you know, people also change when you have long term friendships over time when there's college, university, work and marriage. You know, people do change in their stages whether it means they become more religious or less, or they become, you know, less connected to you, to you in many ways because of their, their different, you know, changes and stages in their lives. Mm. So, you know, it's, again, it's relationships at the end of the day, and it's quite complicated and simple at the same time. But you really need to know yourself and understand that to be a good friend, um, you have to be very strong yourself as to what your values and your beliefs are. And you have to be confident that you can carry that in different environments and settings so that um, others are not, you know, going to be influencing you in a bad way. And you can only take the good and you won't go to the bad. Mm. I mean, people think that children um, generally will be influenced badly, but actually the influence do come a lot from the house. Yeah. And um, if you have a strong, you know, role model in the house or you have strong, you know, rules and regulations and you have general conversations about what's going on and to say that, you know, in our household and in, in the way we do things and the reasons for what the way we do things is the way we do things and other people are, have their right and we can respect it but it doesn't mean that we have to follow suit. And if you sort of instill this from a young age, I think then it can build a character of being okay with who you are mm. and still mixing. Yeah. And, you know, you being the one more powerful to influence in your way right. than have it the other way around. And how about that saying, مَنْ عَشْرَ قَوْمٍ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمٍ أَصْبَحَ مِنْهُمْ So, the one, whoever yes. uh, mixes Mix with, with, a, with a group of people for 40 days becomes like them. So, I mean, Timing where does that come in? Because you're saying that more, it's, it's more the influence at home. So yeah, because, I mean, you are with your family, but the thing is, the timing, obviously, outside, you know, with school and work mm. is that. But, you know, if you're constantly coming back to your house yeah. and you're constantly reassuring that, you know, you're doing certain things, you're having these conversations and you are yeah. practicing certain things, yeah. that will keep you away from it. And you'll be aware okay. that, you know, um, the closeness and the connection that you have with people outside, even if you're spending time with them, is not really that influence. But then there's something within us that will drive us towards those friendships too, which we have to understand unconsciously mm. that we go to those friends that are doing sin or they're doing something that's not right in school and they're acting in a certain way and we are actually attracted to that. So what does that say about us? So, mm. you know, you can't just blame friends as well. It mm. does come from you as to who you choose to hang around with because, you know, you find quiet ones and you'll think that, oh, my child's really quiet. Why is, you know, why are they hanging around with someone that's so loud? But mm. they actually yearn for it. And the same with adults. You know, they might come across as a, you know, a married man, you know, with responsibility and commitment, yet they love the fact that they hang around with someone 10 years younger mm. who's going out a lot and they will do the same thing, if not mm. worse. Mm. So, you know, so it really comes from you. You need to build mm. and know who you are. Okay. And that's what makes a difference. So what you're saying is uh, sometimes your friends are a reflection of what you yeah. yearn to be. Psychology, well. s uh, you know, psychology says that. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, there is an, uh, there is a um, sort of, sec you know, an impact that you know you think that other people are having on you but actually it's just a reflection of how you are really right. so you don't really have that right to say it's someone else's fault and don't mm. blame the friend really 
That's what I'm saying. You have to build yeah, yourself. You can't first. blame a friend because at the end of the day, you chose to to walk with that friend or to yes. hang out with that friend. So. Absolutely. And again, mm. we also come back down to the fact that we are accountable alone. Mm. So there's no one to blame except for you. But the thing is, um, but friends can be manipulative as well, mm. and they can have that influence, and they can see a certain trait in you that they can actually bring out even more, mm. knowingly or not knowingly. So. You, in order to be a good friend as well, you know, you need to know, like, are there someone that, you know, will actually tell you the truth if you're doing something wrong or are they going to encourage you to do something? A lot of the times nowadays we have friendships that are built upon the fact that I will stand by you no matter what. Mm. Wrong or right, mm. I'm there for you. You're my brother. You can go and even, you know, hurt your own family, but I'm on your side. Now, that's not a friend. And on the very basic level, you need some education, mm. you know, because that's not how it should be. You know, you do not back someone up and you do not support someone. You do not give them that helping hand mm. if it's going to break their home, if it's going to break a relationship or you do not break a relationship and you don't be part of that. A true friend and especially an Islamic one, you know, will mm. actually stand back, distance themselves or advise. And it, they certainly would not encourage it. Right. They would not give a hand in that. But a lot of the times you find, especially with teenagers or adults generally, you know, they stand by their friends wrong or right. They think that is loyalty. That's itself, loyalty. That you know, you yep. stand by the yep. friend no matter what happens. Yep. And they don't realize they're actually doing damage. Being non-judgmental, yes. isn't it? There's mm. no such thing as that because, mm. you know, you're not just doing harm to that person who's doing the wrong. You yourself, you know, being like, you know, an encourager, supporter, whatever that may be, mm. in whatever form, you're actually damaging yourself. We all have homes to be built in. We all have, you know, houses to be made and created in over time. And all of that will come back to you and it does hurt you. So do not, mm. you know, think that, you know, because it's not really you and it's someone else and it's not my choice, but I'm just backing up my friend and I'm just doing what they do and I'm being just being their friend him. and being there for them. No, mm. you have to know that in Islam, um, you have to be righteous and religious and you have to have the good morals. Mm. And that's what making a good friend is. But you also tell your friend in a way that doesn't harm them and hurt them. Mm. But the truth needs to be told. And you need to guide and lead in the right way. So you will attract the right friends as well by being a certain friend yourself. So it works hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, over time, we do have different phases and stages with regards to friendships. And it, do, it does change. And even having a long-term friendship can change over time. You know, people do separate and people do, you know, make different choices in life. But you have to really be strong as to who you are and what is it that you want around you. And even successful entrepreneurs, mm. they put themselves in situations and they hang around with people that are gonna uplift them. And they compare themselves to people that are better than them, not worse than them. Don't say, oh, you know, for example, you know, I didn't have a good role model, but I'm better than that role model for my children. No, you compare yourself to someone even better. And that's how you bring yourself up. So at the end of the day, you need to know that, you know, what does it mean to be a person and to be someone of influence so that you do not be influenced in the bad way but you yourself can be the leader and you can be the one to influence so basically when you're self-judging don't look at someone who's uh, less than you or uh, to make yourself feel better to make yourself feel better always yeah. look at someone who is better and try and to st uplift strive to, to get there yes. Yes, absolutely. Because mm. that's what we do in order to say, well, we, you know, we're not that bad. Mm. You know, we're not that bad. We could be worse. But actually, you should strive to be on top. Mm. You need to be the master of everything that you do. And that's how you get to greatness. That's how you overcome and actually work. Because, you know, unless you want to live a mediocre life, and if you want to just, you know, you know, brush by whatever you're doing, that's fine. Mm. But you'll never be fulfilled and happy. Yeah. And again, you know, to be supportive and to encourage I know a lot of friends, they don't want to open up to their other friends and tell them the truth and tell them, you know, what you're doing is wrong or distance themselves if they cannot vocalize it, you know, and they cannot say it in, the, in sort of like a communication way. There's nonverbal communication, you know, mm. distance yourself then. And that person will realize and then maybe you can have a reason as to why it may be that way. Mm. Because it does have a big impact on everything that you do. You even realize that even psychologists have said that they even try to dress like them. They try and look like them whoever they're hanging around with. Mm. Because, you know, they want to mirror their friends. They want to be part of a group, a clique, whatever it may be. Because people want to feel like as if they belong. A lot of the time, a lot of these kind of people actually are very insecure as well. You can have friends, you can hang around in groups, but don't forget to be an individual. Because mm. that's when you stand out and that's when you have an impact and that's when you make a difference. 
and that's when you can you know actually know what's right from wrong and actually be okay to you know to say it out loud okay. when you're faced with it so at the beginning of the show we were saying how to be a good friend how to yeah. choose your friends so can you start off by telling us how we can be a good friend well, you, d you did explain a of bit about, about yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely. saying the truth or yeah. telling them when they're doing something wrong, but what yeah, else? I mean, it, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that we have to address. Like, you know, at the end of the day, um, we, have, we have to know that our character, you know, becomes, you know, part of our faith, you know, our in, in intellect and intelligence. And at the same time, you know, we have the, the sort of like... Um, figures like we have, the role models that mm. we have of the Imams and the, w the reason why they were so great, it wasn't just because of what they went through, it's because of their characters, their virtues, mm. you know, and they even won over people that were even against them because of the way in which they were. And you know, people always say it's so difficult to be, good, you know, or find good friends, but you just got to be a certain person and that will be drawn, you know, to you. All those right people will be drawn to you because you will be that attraction because of you know you know being loyal is not about you know just standing by your friend no matter what they do right and wrong no it's about speaking truthfully it's about standing by them and giving support to them and not turning your back when they're in need for example not breaking relationships you know mm. not holding back on you know being honest about certain advice. things advice advice is something i would not give no because a everyone's in their own journey even as a life coach we don't give advice but mm. question them so that you have an understanding of what they're going through. It's about really being empathetic and you know, compassionate and also trying to, you know, like I said, it's like parenting in a way. You know, you've got to give support and you don't turn your back on them when they're in time of most need because friends are always around, hanging around when there's good times, mm -hmm. when there's you know, a birthday party, an occasion, which is a wedding. But for example, if someone's going through like, you know, a bad time, whether they've lost someone or they've had you know a job that they have you know been let down on or they haven't had good results or they've even you know had a really bad financial turn mm. and everyone just runs away so you know friends are the ones that stick by you and they're with you along the way and not just even if for example in the if there was a funeral and you've got friends coming in the first 10 days the first 40 days and then it all kind of withers away but the feelings are still there the needs are still there so the odd call the odd conversation and now with social media friendships have now changed we've adapted to the fact that you know we just text messages to each other we have friends on Facebook that we've never ever spoken once on but yet we keep you know, adding other people on. Mm. So pick up the phone and just do a random call or a text message, say, when are you free? We should meet up for coffee. You know, so change it to the old fashioned way and have that real human connection so that you are really showing that you are there for them. Mm. You know, even in times beyond those 40 days, beyond those times where you think that, okay, I'm there because, you know, they went, went through something. But then what about the rest of the months? Mm. You know, those feelings are still there and they do linger. So those sort of friends are the ones you want to be connected with, you know, and you know that they're going to stand by you. And when, they, when you know you're not giving them anything back, right? you know, there mm. is nothing that, you know, they, that, you know, they're taking from you yeah. or you're giving them. That's how you are because they're genuinely concerned about your well-being. Okay. So that's the kind of friend we should strive to be. Of course. And how about in terms of choosing friends as a life coach? What do you I mean, recommend? choosing friends, I think it's really important to have diversity. Because at the same time you're influencing, at the same time you're learning, mm -hmm. you're going to be open, you know, and also to educate others that, you know, even if I'm in an environment at work or in school that I'm not going to be, you know, you need to be strong enough to say, no, this is not how it's going to be or suggest something else and okay. know that you can still withstand and withhold your own values and beliefs and have other people respect you for that. You don't need to conform. You don't need to follow. You don't need to think that it's difficult to be in a society where it's not all of, you know, the same background as you. Mm. In fact, that's when you shine. So, you know, make yourself shine and really choose people that you can have that with. And you'll be surprised that a lot of people outside the community, they want to know and they want to learn. Mm. They, they're curious. And the more you have that, you know, impression on them, the more you show that, then that's how you change people's views and minds in the world and society and communities because you step by step are doing that outside your community. You know, we have these inter interfaith, you know, sort of like meetings and things. But you could do that. I mean, in Islam, it says be kind to your neighbor. It doesn't say black neighbor, white neighbor, you know, your own background or culture neighbor. It's just neighbor. Mm. So whoever they are, which just 
in a, in a sense, to me, it's just common sense that it's got to be with everyone to be kind, to be nice, and be friends. You know, give them a lend, you know, a helping hand, and you know, show that you're available. It doesn't mean that you only give charity to someone that's only from your mm. country. Mm. You know, that's only from your background. No, you can help anyone. You can do it for anyone, and that is all goodness because there are so many people out there who don't have religion even, but they've got good morals. Mm. Islam has both, obviously. You know, in order to be a good Muslim friend, a good Muslim person, you have good morals, good ethics. You have the Islamic practical, you know, that you're doing as well as the righteousness within your mind and your actions. So we combine it all. That's how you've got to see it as yourself, to be a person, as a good friend. Mm. And then, you know, with those virtues and characteristics, other people will sort of inspire to be like that. Okay. And that's where you've got to be, like a role model yourself. Okay. Um, and I also hear a lot of things about um, friendship, uh, having positive energy or a person having a positive Absolutely. energy and a person who has ne neg negative, e yes. negative energy uh, towards you. Um, is there such a thing when it comes to your line of work? Do you, of do you see that? Absolutely. People can drag you down or pull you up because mm. not everyone has the same insight or the same you know, wants and needs as you mm. do. Okay. So you know, when you hang around certain people that are constantly complaining or negative, that can bring you down unless you're strong enough to overcome that or you're working in my field and you hear all the negativity and you can right. still overcome it. But generally speaking, it can bring you down. So there is such a thing. There is definitely mm. such a thing. Mm. And if you constantly like that, your way of thinking becomes like that because it brings doubt. It brings sort of like, you know, second guessing. So, you know, you need to be around people, you know, not to say that you have to have this, you know, powerful, you know, group or clan around you. But they, you know, you need to know that the sort of people that you're with radiate positivity yes. mm -hmm. and they're uplifting you mm -hmm. you know what is their what is you know their sort of like you know impact on your on your life mm -hmm. and there is an impact you know the way in which they live the choices that they make the places they visit the things that they do you know you're going to be you know walking in the same footsteps you're going to be doing the same things you know mm -hmm. most of the time if you hang around with them so you know who's the stronger one is it them or you are you following mm -hmm. them because, you know, there's someone who is, I don't know, of a different category or a different profession or a different class or whatever it may be, and you want to follow them and you aspire to be them. But what are they aspiring to? Is that something within your religion? Is that mm -hmm. something within your faith? Is that something within your belief? Is that your value? So you need to question a lot. And what's the impact of that? You know, a lot of these choices that we make today, even you know, subconsciously, unconsciously, is because of the influences around us, the environment and the people especially. So it's really important to, you know, choose wisely and choose beyond just, you know, knowing that someone is important, you know, that has maybe, for example, money or influence or networking and, yeah, I want to hang around them. Is that really for you, mm. you know, in the long term? So you have to be careful, in, in a, in a, especially when you're adults, because you can get stuck to somebody for many years and not mm. realize it and it can affect your own home yeah inshallah like the friends that we choose not inshallah like inshallah we always uh, strive to choose the best friends um to motivate us and to um support you. support us in the right direction inshallah and and shall we try to make ourselves the best friends we can be absolutely and fahima thank you so much for uh, enlightening us with yet another beautiful topic and we're going for a break now and inshallah after the break we'll be answering some of your questions thank you and back soon Assalamualaikum and welcome back to Making a House a Home, where today we're discussing friendship. Uh, Fahima, I have a couple of questions that have come in. Sure. Um, and the first question, um, I have a statement from Samar, because it's not really much of a question here. Okay. Um, and it says, why do so many Muslim parents encourage their children to be friends from their own culture and religion when there are so many good people with high morals and can influence better than even people from their own background? I mean, you know, we have to look at it from both sides. You know, um, it is important to have your own background and culture, 
you know, as friends, because then you want to feel like, you know, you're doing things together, especially as children, you know, when they're growing up and, you know, they want to feel like they're part of something, then I think it's quite nice to have people that they can relate to and they can feel like it's normal to pray, to fast, to wear hijab, for example, mm -hmm. and to have that surrounding. So it's not a bad thing to have people from your own culture, but to make it strictly just, you know, where it's just you know, only from your own background. That's when it becomes a problem because I think, you know, there are definitely good influences around and outside the background, the cultures, and it can make you stronger as a person because then you actually know yourself to say, well, I understand why we don't do certain things, or I understand, you know, you know, what's the reasons, you know, for doing things, to be honest. So in Islam, it's, you know, friendships are important to come from all backgrounds because like we said before, you know, you're influencing as well as you're learning. And, uh, but parents should be a little bit more open. And as long as they're constantly in, in conversation with their own children, and they need to know who their you know, friends are, because it's important. Mm -hmm. Because again, when they're young, they can go astray, and they can be influenced in the wrong way, and think that, oh, because everyone's doing it, and things like that. And there is you know, a concern. But again, you know, in your own household, you have to be very strong as to how you're bringing up and teaching Islam. You have to bring, you know, the real reasons and the meaning and the purpose. And obviously it's different, again, with someone that's really young to someone that's a teenager. But that's why it needs consistency. You don't just tell them when they're young and think, oh, yeah, they've worn hijab now at the age of, you know, nine or something. And that's we just leave them. Because they're still going through so many stages and phases and they're facing so much things. Meeting so many new people. It's meeting so many new people and facing a lot of, you know, different challenges mm -hmm. along the way. So you need to constantly remind them, constantly talk to them, constantly make them understand that you understand that the feelings of, you know, being in certain societies, being in certain environments, being in certain, certain situations, it's going to be a bit difficult. It's going to be challenging because not mm. everything is going to be allowed. Not everything can be done. But, you know, if you address it well, they'll be confident to say, well, we don't really celebrate Christmas, but we have two Aids, for example. Mm, yeah. We have two celebrations. You know, you can spin it around and you can yeah. make it something good. So, um... I do understand the concern of just only having your own background and doing all of that. But then, you know, we're going to have to go out into the, old, the whole, you know, wide, wider wide world. world yeah. You know, so it's good to train them from a young age and to catch them from a young age. So you can see also what are they actually being attracted to. Because again, it, it shows their personality, which you don't see. Mm. If they are, you know, going to be going towards certain, you know, types of friends. And you can address it when they're young and change those habits if need be. Mm. So it's it's really important to be a little bit more diverse and just not to stick to their own. Okay, thanks. Um, and Sarah asks, uh, people change over time and your friends can get less in numbers or just become less close. Yet the type of friendships are changing because of social media and having a negative impact on human connection. So how do you maintain and keep friends? Well, firstly, you just got to go back in time and say, how do you make friends? Have conversations, talk, pick up the phone, meet up, you know, really connect with people, go to them mm. in the times where they least expect. Like I said, if there was something that they were going through and, you know, everyone turns up at the same time, you know, at the beginning. So you also turn up when those days have passed, mm. you know, keep it going, basically. Mm. I know we all have busy lives, we have families, we have our own things happening, because, but we're all going to be in those situations. We all live in glass houses, mm. you know, we're all going to you know, experience some sort of cracks and falls and, you know, breakage, and we all need them. So don't think that, oh, my life's so busy and I'm just, you know, I don't have time for this. You know, that's also ibadah, is to go out there and, you know, give someone, you know, a smile, you know, make them happy and, you know, show them that you care and mm. you're concerned and, you know, take that time out. We can do yeah. it. It is definitely possible. Mm. So to be, you know, in the social media gathering and use that as an advantage, not a bad thing. Everyone says the social media is so bad. It's just the way you use it. You know, you can reach out to connect, but then take it further. Don't just leave it as just, you know, with that just one message. Say, mm. you know, tell me when you're free, let's meet up then, if you're gonna communicate via that. But don't just leave it as, oh, how are you? And have a full on conversation and that's it and never meet, never connect, mm. never really have that human, you know, interaction. Yeah. So I think that's really important and vital. Mm. And can I just pick up on what you said about the um, being there for someone is ibadah? Yeah. Um, I've always felt that way, actually, that being there for, for the human beings generally, not just friends, is the best form of ibadah. And we, we of do course. tend to forget that, don't we? We forget. We forget mm. the simple things. Yeah. And, you know, 
we know we have to do our daily you know prayers and whatever else that mm. you know is just further upon us but is the little things that we take the extra time to do yeah. really counts more and it actually builds your character it takes you out of your own world as well and you can be grateful you can be accepting you can be appreciative even more so when you're actually helping someone else and mm. that's what makes you a great person a great mm. friend yeah um, and I have a question from Zaha and she asks she asks in a working environment socializing with colleagues is part of networking and you build business when you meet up and create friendships How, however it can be challenging to stick to your religious principles and maintain the friendship when they may drink alcohol um, during these uh, social events yeah no of course um, yes of course in, in in work environments it's definitely a challenge but again you know um, you have to make different suggestions you have to also you know a voice the way you feel and um, it depends you know in s a lot of companies nowadays in very big companies they are very supportive mm. of you know you being a certain way and you know they actually respect you for being yourself like a lot of you know girls wearing hijabs are working in top 500 companies they're you know they're solicitors they're you know consultants mm. and they do make an impact but I know on the whole it is very very demanding and you have to socialize in places and you know be outside in in areas and you know places that you wouldn't want and you have to gauge for yourself as to how far you can go and sometimes to just maybe not put yourself in that situation and Allah will give you another form of it happening and being that way so that you know because you're doing it out of your principle out of mm -hmm. your values that if you think you're missing out we can't go to every party we can't go mm -hmm. to and see every event anyways exactly so you know you can work around maybe saying a lunch dinner a lunch a lunch date for example instead of a dinner date mm -hmm. so that you know that it's not going to be late for example mm -hmm. and it might not have probably alcohol maybe people don't drink during the day as much as they do drink during the night for example or they mm -hmm. might choose a venue where it's a more like a luncheon a brunch so that they won't be going to a pub for example mm -hmm. you know all these things you have to gauge you have to be creative you have to innovate you have to say, well, you know, I would appreciate if, you know, we would go here, for example, let's try something new if you don't want to be so upfront about it as well. Mm. So it is very testing, definitely. And, uh, but I think when you stand out as an individual mm. and you say it and do it in the right way, you can actually gain more respect, you know, because you are following your way. Just like if a person says, I don't believe in anything, you know, people accept that. So why mm. can't they accept the opposite? Yeah, no, you get lots lot, lot of English people yeah. or uh, non-Muslims. Non I, I call them English people <laughs> all the time. Uh, the non-Muslims who are, who are vegan or vegetarian. Yes. And they say, you know, I'm not going to go to this restaurant. Exactly. Because they don't, I don't have the food I, I, yeah. I, I eat. There's nothing or wrong. There's a lot of um, non-Muslims who don't drink alcohol. Yes. So it's, it doesn't have to necessarily be... You, you don't know, need to conform. You don't have to, yeah, you don't have to say it's my religion. Just say, I choose not yeah. to. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to yeah. label it. Yeah. But this is not your preference. This is not what you're comfortable in. It's you can make other suggestions mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You can maybe take charge and say, well, there's a better venue out there which mm -hmm. will suit everyone. And yeah. you can give your reason reasons for that you know in a business way you know because it's probably more likely to be less rowdy or you know less busy whatever it could be mm. you can choose but yeah it is challenging but there's no such thing as not coming around it if you really want to exactly you know most of the time people put themselves in situations go into sort of you know areas and places that they wouldn't normally go to and use it as an excuse that it's work but they actually want to go anyway mm. so you know you've got to look at it in that way too yeah if you really didn't want to go i don't i think there exactly. was you'd come up with a million reasons for not to absolutely yeah, yeah. um and i have a question from manar um and she asks how can you still be friends with someone who has changed their ways like now they have become less concerned about practicing their faith and living a very different life than before so am I, so I am finding it really difficult because I feel we do not connect as much as we used to, but I don't want to lose our friendship. Okay, we need to analyze now, um, are we, you know, sort of being friends with people because they're like us? Um, we have to sort of analyze, are we only with certain people because we know we get something from them or are we giving them something? So you got to know the type of person you are and some people you rely on to uplift you, to sort of help you through your religion, to help you through your day, to help you through your practices. And yes, that changes over time, but you need to be an individual, understanding that everyone is not gonna be on the same level as you as every time. And they're gonna have their different opinions, they're gonna have their different ways of living, they're gonna change. 
but friendships are not based upon them being like you all the time and giving you what you want all the time. We have to also know that it's about you being there for them and you also being accepting. Even if it's against what you believe in, then you distance yourself if you can't influence. And the fact that you still care for this person and you're in this situation, then maybe it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to dig deeper, to ask more meaningful, understanding questions. And if they diverting into an area or, you know, into some sort of lifestyle that you're not, you know, happy about, then you can step away. There's nothing wrong in that. And you don't have to be, oh, I'm doing that because, you know, you're not praying anymore, for mm. example, or whatever it may be, because no one's better than anyone. We don't but, know if we're yeah. going to be accepted in any sort of way. Mm. As but well. she's asking that she wants to she wants to keep the friendship. Yes, you can keep that friendship, mm. but it's going to change. Everything changes. And, you know, if that person chooses a certain path, they have to also understand there's consequences mm. for it. You know, everything that we choose, we have freedom of choice, we have free will, but there are consequences for it. Mm. So that might make her continue because she's got new friends, or it might make her come back because she's losing her own friends. You mm. don't know which direction it goes. You just got to be the best you can be. You still got to be supportive. You still got to be out there, you know, reaching out. But you can't expect people to be like you. Mm. As friends, that's another very important thing. We want us all to be the same, dress the same, eat the same, go out the same, have the same likes. No, we've got to be accepting of the differences. And it goes far beyond even just, you know, being outside the religion. If they have a different religion and oh, we, we think that now we're the same religion, we're going to do everything the same. And that's what keeps us good friends. No, everyone's different. And we've got to accept those differences. And, you know, even people don't like to be with friends if they have a different opinion. Mm. And if one friend likes one friend and gets along and if the other one, you know, has to conform and do have the same sort of relationship, it doesn't work like mm. that. You know, you can't be like those sort of friends. Yeah. You need to know that, you know, to be supportive, to be understanding. And if that person does not remind you and is not there for you, for your purpose in life, then yeah, you have to sort of distance yourself. And you have to walk away sometimes. And you can still be there. But there's different forms, there's different ways of being there for somebody. Doesn't mean you might, you might not hang around as much as before. You might not have the same opinions, but that's okay. You know, friendships come in different forms, in different ways. And there are people that have friendships over years and they only pick up after months and they can, you know, and they can be fine. They can pick up from where they left off. Or there's friendships that feel that they need that constant conversation and phone calls and those hourly talks, you know, on a daily basis. But it doesn't work all the time. And it can't remain the same all the time. Mm. So it's okay. It's okay. Whatever f your friend's going through, you're still their friend. You know, it might change a little bit. It might, you know, alter how it used to be. But if it's not beneficial to you, it's not a bad thing. Mm. So, you know, be brave. You know, you can, obviously, if it's a good enough and close enough friend, you know, you can be open about how you're feeling. And sometimes just be careful how you say it, though. You don't want to hurt somebody and you don't want to judge someone either. You can have, you don't have a right to always have an opinion and you can't judge. We don't know if we're good and we're bad, even if we're doing the right things. How do we know it's accepted for you to even judge someone else? So, you know, just just take it, you know, as it comes. And don't lose the friendship. There's no need mm. to lose the friendship. It's just a different type. It's a different relationship now. And you can actually even grow maybe stronger from it. Okay. Um, that's all. We don't have any more questions for today. Um, and thank you for answering uh, the questions. And inshallah, our viewers have benefited from uh, everything that Fahima has said today um, and that's the end of our show inshallah we'll be back next week with another topic and thank you so much and nice if you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode please contact your local GP or Fahima Mohammed on coachfm1 at hotmail.com